It's 77th day of President Bola Tinubu's administration, and we're back monitoring developments in his first 100 days in office. Thank you for joining us on the program. I am Nifemi Ogutoye. So it's exactly one week after the confirmation of 45 ministers designate by the Red Chamber, and Nigerians are looking forward to President Bola Tinubu assigning portfolio to the confirmed ministers designate as they await in earnest the renewed hope agenda. There's also another update coming from the Nigeria Liberal Congress President Joe Ajaro saying if there is another increase in petrol pump price, there would be a total comprehensive and indefinite nationwide shutdown of the country. The NLC president gave the notification at the African Trade Union Alliance meeting in Abuja, where organized labor also warned against undermining the demands of the union. Earlier on Sunday, oil marketers indicated that the cost of premium motor spirit would rise to between 680 naira per litre and 720 naira per litre in the coming weeks, should the dollar continue to trade from 910 naira to 950 naira at the parallel market. We're joined now by Ipman President Chinedu Okoronko uh, for more on this development. Thank you for joining us on the program this evening. There are strong indications that um, we're in for yet another pump price increase, and it would be uh, perhaps the third within 10 weeks. What's the update and what's, what's the reason for this? Well, I understand that Mr. Koroko uh, will be joining us in the course of this um, program. Hopefully, we can get some updates from Ipman as regards uh, what's happening in that area. However, uh, let's bring you some updates within uh, the presidency. The acting governor of the CBN says President Bola Tinubu is very concerned about the developments in Forex, its impact on the ordinary Nigerians, and is saying that the president is seeking to improve the liquidity in the market with the new measures that will be rolled out by the country's Apex Bank. The acting CBN governor also strongly warned speculators involved in round tripping that these measures will put them out of business and incur losses for them. He insists that the exchange rate in the official market has been relatively stable and blamed the instability on speculative demand by people. In the State House, and um, Mr. President was very concerned, or is very, very concerned, about some of the goings-on in the foreign exchange market. And one of the things we discussed were what could be done to stabilize and what could be done to improve the liquidity in the market and also the goings-on in the various other markets, including the parallel market. He is concerned about its impact on the average person since, unfortunately, a lot of activities that we do, which are purely local, are still referenced to exchange rates in the parallel market. Um, we've discussed and I've shared with him what we're doing to improve supply. If you look at the official market, you find that that market has been fairly stable and the spreads or the difference have not fluctuated as much. We do not believe that the changes going on in the parallel market are driven by pure economic demand and supply, but are topped by speculative demand from people. Uh, some of the plans and strategies which I'm not at liberty to share with you mean sooner rather than later the speculators should be careful because we believe the things we are doing, when they come to fruition, may result in significant losses to them. But my presence here is more about the concerns the president has and his need to know that we are doing something about it, assurances of which I have given him totally. State House correspondent Femi Akonde joins me live from the presidential villa. Femi, help us break down what Mr. President's concerns are 
and the exact intervention coming from the CBN. Well, if I mean, the president's concerns are the general concern of Nigerians with um, the fluctuating forex market that has impacted virtually everything in the country, from commodities to uh, goods, food prices, and even the pump price of petrol. Uh, the hike we are experiencing in the, in the pump price of petrol is also being influenced by the, uh, the fluctuating or the hike in the um, dollar rate in the foreign exchange. You know, all of these concerns have um, also reached the doorstep of President Bolatinibu. And what he has done with these new measures is like giving um, the Central Bank of Nigeria a sledgehammer to um, hit whoever these uh, speculators are, especially the money deposit banks who they say are, are, are most times involved in round trippings because, you know, the previous administration of the central bank took the monies from um, the uh, bureau to change the BDCs and handed them the dollar to the um, money deposit banks. But since that happened, a lot of people do not have access to these um, foreign exchange PTAs and a lot of people involved in legitimate business uh, do not have access to the dollar. What President Tinobu is saying now is that strong sanctions we should uh, is uh, instructing the CBN to do, and we believe what the CBN will be doing is enforcing um, strong sanctions against uh, these um, money deposit banks who are involved in speculating. We also we are also hearing that some of the measures that will be introduced will be um, injecting huge funds in dollars now into the country's foreign reserve uh, to show up um, the to show up that um, reserve, and that would also create stability in the foreign exchange market. But all of this will be done without resorting to borrowing. That is one thing President Bola Tinubu uh, is seeking to avoid. Uh, desperately to ensure that the country again is not indebted. And we are hearing again that some of these um, speculate, speculations in the foreign exchange market could also be as a result of, you know, the audit that is ongoing in the Central Bank of Nigeria. The revelations we are hearing, the, the, a lot of things that have been unraveled in the Central Bank of Nigeria are perpetrated by uh, the previous administration in the CBN, the previous leadership in the CBN. All of these have also contributed in uh, causing that instability in the foreign exchange market. And well, President Bola Tinubu is up to the task, and that is what um, he is saying in showing that, yes, he knows um, what time it is and uh, putting the right, um, uh, doing the right thing at, um, the nick of, in the nick of time to ensure that um, these uh, rising forex is uh, quickly checked. I know it also comes at a time when the president's approval rating, according to the poll conducted by uh, a, uh, an online paper, Cable, is at 62%, you know, uh, quite impressive for a president who is just about uh, two months in office. So with all of these uh, measures, again, that would ensure that uh, there's a, a quick reversal in the momentum in um, the foreign exchange market and uh, the parallel market, you know, this would also help uh, raise that approval rating uh, quite higher to a considerable uh, level. So we believe that in the coming days, all of this will begin to have impact in all sectors of the economy, especially uh, the pump price of petrol, which we hear that labor is already spoiling for a fight if uh, the pump price is further jacked up. Nifemi. Talking about the approval rate, Femi, uh, we understand that um, independent marketers are now talking about the impact that the Forex is having on the landing cost and what it means for the pump price of petrol in the coming days. But just how volatile is this rating, uh, particularly when you consider the president's in intervention? Is there a timeline as to when Nigerians can begin to feel the impact of what the CBN is doing in this regard? The acting governor of the CBN specifically said in the coming days, so we do not expect it to take um, weeks or months before Nigerians begin to feel that impact. It's immediate. The injection of funds into the country's foreign reserve will be done with immediate effect. This, uh, the measures and um, that will be put in place and laws that will be put in place for depo money deposit banks to strictly comply with are just uh, will be. Uh, put out within days. We are expecting to hear a statement from the central bank um, today or tomorrow. And with immediate effect, we also expect compliance 
by the money deposit banks, people doing businesses, imports, and other kind of um, legitimate business that are in need of Forex can go to the banks. And, you know, the hassles involved in getting Forex will now uh, be eliminated and any bank found wanting will be sanctioned and might also be denied uh, Forex. And you know that a lot of banks uh, would not want um, this kind of sledgehammer to fall on them, Nifemi. Interesting development. We're looking forward to all of these new interventions and how much impact that we have on the partisan power for the average Nigerian in the coming days. State House correspondent Femi Akonde live for us at the presidential villa. We're going on a break now. When we return, I'll be joined by a personal finance expert. So what happens when Nigeria's purchasing power uh, is um, being deeply affected, the cost of living uh, steadily rising and household disposable incomes shrinking? What must you do differently in these days, particularly in the midst of all of the strategies uh, that this new administration is employing? We'll be talking more about that in a moment. Stay with us. In just 23 days, President Bola Tinubu would have spent 100 days in office. He's now reassured Nigerians that no stone will be left unturned in his pursuit uh, to ensure that things get better, particularly in stimulating the economy. The president made this known when the Board of Trustees of the All Progressives Congress Professionals Forum led by former Bauchi State Governor Isa Yuguda, visited him in the presidential villa on Friday. While thanking President Tinubu for his bold interventions on the economy, the former Bauchi State Governor said more than 2 million people have now registered as professionals in different fields since 2018 and are ready to sensitize the public on government policies. We paid a courtesy visit to Mr. President. Uh, to uh, congratulate him on his uh, success in the elections, in the polls, and of course to commend him for the efforts so far in uh, rebuilding uh, confidence and also uh, uh, making sure that the economy is moving in the right direction. Uh, we've seen the bold steps he's taken, and we're praying for him, and of course, as uh, an appendage of APC, as a political party, we are body of professionals ranging from bricklayers to rocket scientists. We are all professionals. And uh, the uh, forum was registered way back in 2018, uh, given that there is that perception there out in the public that uh, politicians are rogues, politicians are thieves, politicians are so on and so forth. Even going to the extent that today uh, the banking industry has uh, more like uh, as a policy not uh, lending to politicians and their families. And also uh, he's addressing also the issue of corruption. And I believe uh, uh, we, we thought we should just mention it to him. But uh, with uh, corruption and insecurity, we believe uh, things might not be uh, very good. So, and uh, Mr. President is already addressing that. So we commended, we commended him for that effort. All right, so will Nigerians be, uh, will have, will they have to pay more for the pump price uh, of petrol in the coming days? Let's find what's happening. Let's find out what's happening in that brigade. Ipman President Chinedu Okoronko joins me now on the program. Thank you for finding time to join us at this time. What's the truth about the indications we're hearing about um, yet another increase in the pump price of petrol? Okay. I think um, all, all these things happening now is the regime of uh, removal of uh, subsidy. The market reality is is what we are seeing. Before, government would have been using their money to cushion these things. Now that government said, look, we can't handle it again. That is why we are there now. That is why you can see the thing is 
no more suggested. People in Kaduna is not enjoying the same price of people in Lagos. Before it used to be a uniform price. No more equalization. Business of uh, PMS is like any other business. Maybe make crafts. What are the what are the key factors here? Because we are hearing a lot. Some are talking about landing cost. Others have talked about foreign exchange and even the price of crude oil. Yeah, you know when you are not refining this thing here, factors affecting the price internationally will also come to play. I think that is what we are beginning to see. But before all these things, we are really not. Uh, on by the uh, uh, the masses, government was taking it, and this new government, in their own wisdom, felt they are not going to continue to bear this. Let's see if we can use this money and address other issues. I think that is what we are seeing now. So the reality is there, but thank God we have other energy needs in the place of energy compressed natural gas, which I think the government has also agreed that this is the way to go. I hear you, and that's what pretty much in the pipeline, particularly when you hear government's plans in this regard. But can you confirm for us that the landing cost of petrol increased by 37%, you know, on a month-by-month -month basis Let us not in the month of July? Let about landing costs. Now, the... You called me Ipman president. That is what, what I am. We are in the filling station buying this fuel from young farm owners and the NPC. For now, we've not started importing. So begin to dive into area that uh, I've not really... So what's the projection? What's the projection? What's the price projection that we're looking at what the as of today? The projection will not be accurate if I give you now. Like today, some tank farm owners in Lagos are selling 580, 575. Ordinarily before, it was about 450 something or 460 something. So I uh, am expecting a huge price, whereas tomorrow it might not be. This product, it will either go up or down. It's not suggested. It's not, they begin to talk about price change. This is, is the realities of the market we are seeing. Now, Nigerian government is making good money from selling their crude. Before, when they sell it, they will also use in the subsidy. And a lot of vices. Now, I'm not really at the level that there will not be criminality, but it's so transparent now that you can catch people who wants to do some underhand deals. That is what this government is now bringing into bear. So what we need now is an alternative to this world and allow government to make their profit, reduce pressure on, on the Naira by importation. And this is what is locally here. I continue to say it because and until people begin to understand what I'm saying. All we right. say we have gas here, gas. I'm talking about fuel. This is gas that is being fled in billions of cars. Can't we use it? All right. For uh, the good of this country. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution, President Ape Manchin, to a chronicle. Uh, good to hear your thoughts on thank this you. development thank story. You. Let's turn our attention now to CEO Set Group, a personal finance expert that... Uh, Sami Akindipe, thank you for joining us on the program. What kind of adjustments do you think Nigerians now have to make in the face of our economic reality? Thank you for having me. And I would like to start by saying that um, one of the major challenges that we see is that the dollar rate changes, the inflation rate increases, Businesses in Nigeria needs to now look at how can we pull in joint efforts. And then when I say joint effort, um, you want to look at businesses you can partner with and look at some of the overhead costs that is similar and then see how you um, work together. So a practical example is a business A that is willing to move with the business B and both of them used to bond 
uh, fuel of about, let's say, uh, 50,000 every month uh, individually can now come together, deliver the same 50,000 or let's even say 80,000, reduce the overhead cost, share some other bills like that, and then they still be able to share the office space together and business is still running. So small businesses can look at taking advantage of that and the federal government and the state government can also begin to look at, okay, how can we create a hub for small business owners where the overhead costs to be shared together such that we are able to push in the effects for small business owners? The same thing goes for individuals. So um, they have to begin to look at um, the digital space. The digital space is about the place where you can uh, do things globally and then you'll be able to hand in foreign currency. So you are not only affected by the local currency, you are able to take advantage of making money um, on the online platform in foreign currency and then bring it into the country rather than Nigerian taking money outside the country. And I think the government should also look at that direction. Uh, we have a large population of young people that can work online, why don't we create a centralized hub that will make young people to come on board and then be able to work on daily basis and then make some good money for themselves. And then we can attract jobs from different parts of the world where the labor cost is high. This is what I'm saying. Now, if you are going to get a secretary in, England, for instance, you have to pay the secretary very high. Part of the job the secretary will do is I to did. type your letters, put things together for you, and you can get that done online by transferring that labor to Nigeria. But the government is the one that can make that possible. Let me hold you for a minute, Mr. Akindikwe. News just um, reaching us. We have a breaking news. Uh, the Nigerian Air Force... <laughs> And the Air Force MI-171 helicopter on a casualty evacuation mission crashed today at about 1 p.m. at um, Chukuba village in Niger State. The aircraft had departed Zongeru Primary School en route Kaduna, but later discovered to have crashed near Chukuba village in Shiroro local government area of Niger State. We understand that efforts are currently ongoing to rescue the crew and passengers on board the helicopter while preliminary investigations have also commenced to determine the probable cause of the crash. We're following that story closely and we'll bring you more updates shortly. <laughs> Personal finance expert, um, Dr. Sami Akindikpe, thank you for staying the course. You've talked about the approach that small businesses and individuals can take in order to adjust to what is the current economic situation. Well, let's look at um, the reaction also coming from organized labor. NLC is saying that um, if there is another increase in the pump price, which would be in the third and 10 weeks, then there will be a complete shutdown. What's the implication of that? on many of the you know, interventions and strategies that you've talked about? Basically, uh, what the NLC is how to do, the organized labor is how to do, is just to make the government do something that will make it life easier for the people, basically. But we should not also forget that this same well issue started some years back. If we don't solve this problem, it will be carried forward. And it's better we resolve it once and for all. I all right. think um, a deliberate discussion about the way forward will help us more. Because when there is an, a total shutdown, productivity yeah. is out. Sounds Nobody like you're appealing money. to organized labor to understand government intervention. I'm afraid we have to continue this conversation 
um, subsequently. But a big thank you to CEO Set Group, Dr. Sami Akindikbe, for sharing with us on the program. That's um, first 100 days. You can watch a repeat broadcast at midnight and at 6 a.m. tomorrow. I am Nifemi Ogunto. We're back with more stories at the top of the hour. Stay with us.